so yeah, like I was saying, so like even though, even though at a young age I was trying to avoid confrontation, I understood, I, I learned very quickly that that wouldn't prevent other people from trying to do things to me, if you see what I mean, trying to like confront me or trying to like fight or whatever, you know. Um, so I realised that I had to defend myself, you know. Um, and thankfully, like, I was, I, I, I was always able to hold my own. I was never, you know, never able to, someone that anyone could bully or could kind of, you know, get over easily, you know. I would always, you know, defend myself. And I must say, um, and I'm not saying this, I mean this in a humble way, you know, like, all the times that I did fight, there's not many that I did lose, to be very honest, throughout my life, you know, either from very young or in secondary school or, you know, a few years, you know, even after secondary school, you know. Um, there's not there's not many that I did lose, you know, of course you do lose a couple, you know, um, that does happen, you know, you're going to always meet someone occasionally that might, you know, might, you know, be able to hit you a lot harder than you can hit them, if you see what I mean, and they might catch you, you know, right, you know, catch you off guard, you know, um, so yeah, um, but yeah, I was always able to hold my own, so yeah, I'm grateful for that, you know. Um, and it's the same kind of principles that I kind of instill in kind of in my son as well today. And my daughter as well, she actually gets older, she'll be able, you know, she, I want her to be able to defend herself to, to, to a degree too as well, if you see what I mean. Have some kind of like, you know, um, like martial arts training or boxing or something, so, you know. And the same applies, and, and for my son too, you know, the same applies, you know. Because um, it not only teaches them discipline, but it also teaches them how to defend themselves, you know, if they have to. Um, and I, I, I always instill in my children too, like, you don't ever go looking for trouble, you know, um, and sometimes that doesn't mean that trouble's not going to find you, because it does, we've all, we all know that, you know, anyone that's old enough of a certain age knows that sometimes trouble finds you, um, you're not always looking for it, um, so I just instill in them that if it comes, and you try, you, you know, try to avoid it, but if you can't avoid it, then you do what you have to do, you know what I mean, it's as simple as that, you know, so... Yeah. I was talking about my dad, you know, I didn't really see him much, you know. Yeah. They separated mm -hmm. and he met somebody else and had two children. Yeah. Yeah. Started a new family, you know. Yeah. I didn't really see a lot of them all mm. through my life, really, you know. Um, so, how many children did your father have in total? Four. four. So, it's two, you and your brother, and, and then two of the. Yeah. 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 Okay. And anyway, um,. My well, dad drank a lot, mm. Mm. heck of a lot, you know, even when he, he first got married, he drank a lot, you know I mean, I, I look back in those days, so did a lot of men, Yeah, you know, yeah. it was the yeah. end thing for lots of men to do at that time, you know, yeah. and even today it's a bit of a trend. It's still part of the British culture, isn't it? Kind and, of and well, the, know, well it's, a lot, it's still part of a lot of cultures, you know. You know, and I look at like, I mean, it's so, I think like some people have got children, you know what I mean, they go for a drink, mm. and they're not really you know, sort of walking away from their responsibilities in a kind of way, do you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, some men might only drink a little bit, you know, and they, they got children, you know, I think that's yeah. fair enough, but it's when, it's when you're drinking all the time every day, right, and you've got children, right, that's when you start becoming more responsible, you know. But that, that, that's an alcoholic. Exactly. That's my, an my, alcoholic. my dad was an alcoholic, mm. and I expect sort of back then, a lot of men were, mm. you know, and women, Yeah. you know, yeah. drink. Drink back then in the 60s or 65 when I was born back then, mm. it wasn't sort of like deemed as poisonous. Back yeah, then, you know, same as smoking. Yeah, yeah. You know, smoking was a cool thing to do back then. Mm. You know, and you know, it, it, it was the in thing. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 the new, the new trend. I didn't realize it was bad for your health back then. Mm. You, know what I mean? you know, they yeah. advertised it. You know, now they banned the advertisement on that now. You know? Oh yeah, yeah, of course. Many yeah. years, back, many years you know? ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, when I was younger, you know, like I can remember the advertisement, yeah. you know, yeah. I can remember going in, you know, when I was 14 mm. and asking for cigarettes, you know, even when I was 14. Well, yeah. I remember being very young and growing up and watching on television, I remember certain things used to be sponsored, yeah, even right, sponsored, yeah. sponsored, sports do, yeah. yeah, sports things and shit, mm. being sponsored by these tobacco companies and shit, yeah. and then like you said, that's also stopped as well, if you see what I mean, all that, all the that's sponsorship right, yeah. of, you know. Well, my mum, um, my mum, she, she's always worked for a company called BAT, and that's yeah. British American Tobacco, Yes. and they sponsored a lot of sports, big company, <laughs> Yeah. and um, she used to get these free tickets to go to 
snooker places, you know. Okay, nice. Like, yeah, I used yeah. to go to them, you know what I mean? But, yeah. But yeah, they, I can remember the app, you know, like um, MC666, you know, which maybe I shouldn't say these days, because yeah. you know, you're not allowed to say it. Mm. Yeah, um, it, was called, it, was called, you it was called Embassy 666. Yeah, and then, then you had Marlborough. Yeah, he had the type son of the devil, wasn't it? Yeah. You know, yeah. John Player Special. No, oh, yeah. Another one. Um, mm. Embassy number one. Yeah. It's a good name, isn't it? It's funny, though, because I used to use Embassy. I used to use Embassy when I used to roll my smokes um, over in the Caribbean. I used to use Embassy cigarettes, right? Because that's what a lot of people use over that over there, or something called Fanta, which is like a low, which is kind of like a a, a homegrown tobacco. Oh yeah. I guess if you see what I mean, um, to, you know, for people to you know kind of get understand what it is. Um, but yeah, I used to use tobacco. Um, sorry, um, Embassy over there years ago, and um, when I came back over here, the Embassy is different over here. Funny enough. To the ones that I used to get in the Caribbean, if that makes sense. Like they could take the like, taste of it was completely different, if you see what I mean. Like I couldn't use it. When I come back over here and I first like as soon as I moved back over here, obviously you know, you know, I mean I was rolling up my smokes or whatever. Um, I was, you know, trying to use the embassy, but as you know, when I tried it, I was like, oh this is horrible, like it's not the same. It's funny how, you know, um, just random. I know it's a bit random, but mm. yeah. The taste was completely different, you know, it was yeah. Nice, but um back to crime. Mm. Um, you know, it's business crime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would yeah, you yeah. say business? I mean, is a would you class a banker that's doing well as a criminal? <laughs> you know, I don't know. You know, I don't know. I think the law, like we said before, the law has it. So, like I said earlier, the law has its own definition and, and thing as as to how it defines a criminal. Um, and we do as people, if you see what I mean. Some things that... It's criminal if you don't pay your taxes. Well, exactly. Mm. And a lot of people, a lot of us won't agree with that. Why are you a criminal? Especially if the person is in a, in a, in a really bad situation where they can't pay their taxes. You know, why should they be in prison for that? They, obviously, if they can't afford to pay it, how are they, how they going to pay it if they can't afford to pay it? You know? Um, so, yeah. It's, it's a complicated it's, world, it's, isn't it? It's, it's, yeah. It, dep it depends on what you define as, 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 I think everyone, you know, the law has their definition and I think we as human beings have our definition, you know? It's like, okay, like, even parking somewhere, somewhere that someone's not supposed to could be considered a crime and they get a fine for it. There's going to be a lot of people that won't agree with that, if you see what I mean. I would say, you know, that it's, you know, just, you know, there was an empty space and I parked my car. I wasn't interfering with anyone or anything, if you see what I mean. There's no one else around. But you know you're in the wrong spot, wrong place. Here's your fine, you know. And if you don't pay it, then it gets increased. And if you don't pay it, then you take you to court. There's a big crime um, talking on your mobile or texting somebody whilst you're driving as well. Oh yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, but I agree with that. I do agree with that one. There is a guy called Cycle Michael, or something that goes around London, always, you know, sort of capturing them. Oh okay, yeah. yeah. So he's, he's on. A, well, he's not. Even, I, I don't think he's even a policeman. He's on a. He's on a bike, yeah. Well, he gets these people so angry, you know. He's like, you know, like catching them, sort of like on their phones, and then he sends them into the court, you know, whatever, and they get six, you know, penalty points and big fines, you know, and sometimes they lose their jobs because of it. Do you know what I mean? Because you know they are just sort of like say waiting for on a red light or something you know going like that on their phone you're not, you're not allowed to do that do you know what i mean with the, the engine running apparently you know um it's it's classed as a big crime mm. yeah yeah i mean can I, I can understand it a little bit when you're driving you know because i don't think anyone you know, should be using anything that's going to distract them when they're driving especially a phone when you're standing you know. still you're not in a dangerous situation you know, yeah, no, of, I know, I know, but it's yeah. just like people. It is the rule, but I mean, it's like you, you, your phone's always like you know your phone's always going to be there. Like you know, whenever you stop, you can make a call, you know, or pull over somewhere, and make a call quickly. Like you know, all I'm saying is don't endanger, don't endanger someone else's life just because you want to make a quick call or you want you trying to reply to a text quickly. You know, it's it's not worth it like you know it's just really not worth it you know especially if you've got other people in the car like you know that's crazy like you're driving a car you've got other people in the car especially if you've got kids you know and you're you know getting distracted from you know the road you know by your phone you know it's like you're not only could potentially endanger your life but you've got other occupants in the car that could potentially you know be in danger because of your silly actions like you know 
goes back to like we always talk about, mate, just thinking before you act. Like, you know, you've got to think before you act, you know. There's, there's, there's consequences for every decision that we make, good or, you know, good and bad, you know. So, you know. But even with um, traffic, yeah, there's a lot of crime in it, isn't it? I mean, like, for instance, if there is a crash or somebody gets run over, the police come in and they got the rulers out, so I mean, they want to know the speed, you know, they, yeah. you know, but in this modern day, you know, we got um, cameras on, what do you call them? Yeah. Cash cams? Um, car cams, whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah, dash cams, yeah. Dash cams, that's yeah. what I was talking about, yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. You know, everyone's, all the cars have got to have them now, you know, running, I think, mm. by law, mm. I think. Yeah. And it's a good idea, really, you know, because when an accident does happen, we, you know, you can see those films. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can see exactly what happened, if you sort of mean, you know, mm. so. Yeah. In a kind of way, I feel like that's making the world a little bit better, mm. a bit safer, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, as I've said in previous episodes, I've never liked cars, you know, I just find them so dangerous, you know, it, it's made our world dangerous, mm. it, you know, in a different way. I think our world's always been dangerous. Yeah, always, yeah. You know, you, know, you go back 500 years, years ago, you know, you're sort of like people with steel armour and a sword coming around cutting your head off, you know. Yeah, yeah. And crimes were... R riding, into well, your riding into your village on horseback, you yeah, know what I mean? mean? You yeah. know, and you couldn't sort of like throw a lot of police back then, do you know what I mean? There was you know, nothing, nothing, it, nothing, nothing no, no protection, you had to defend yourself, yeah. you had to defend your village, you, you had to defend your honour, you know. You know, how how things have changed in 500 years, let's put that way. Oh yeah, for sure, yeah. Big yeah. time. Immensely, you know? yeah. And I think like... Human evolution. Living in this electrical world, I mean, yesterday morning I woke up, all right, my electric went. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. How, how, how long was it off for, roughly? Five minutes. Oh, not long then. But okay. I was up trying to upload a, a, a video to YouTube, all right, and it all shut down. All right, and then I had to start again, wait another 10 minutes, all right, and start my program again, whatever, you know. It's like, because what I was trying to do is export the, the, the file mm. to upload onto my YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah, of course. And I was halfway through exporting an electric ring. Okay. You know, so yeah. I had to start up again, mm. and it takes ages for my computer. Mm -hmm. You know, you think it takes seconds, but it takes half an hour, you know, yeah. or 20 minutes or so. Then I've got to open the programs up and sign in to it and do it all again. Mm. And then it went again yeah. when I was doing that, you know. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't believe it. I thought, oh no, is it going to be a day thing? You know, and I thought, oh, you know, it's only five minutes again. I'm yeah. Turn it back on, and then I'd start it up again. Yeah. And they did it again. Yeah. You know, three times a day. Like, that's why I phoned you up. So yeah, yeah, yeah. As, yeah. You know, it's all electric code because it's doing my editing. Yeah. I'm trying to do, a, you know, upload a video and it's taking three hours. Yeah. To do, you know. Mm. But, you know, we're living in a very, you know, we rely on electric. Oh, time, of course. You know? Yeah, immensely. We, we, yeah. Everyone charges their phones on up on them. Mm. It goes to shops and go like you know it's all electrical, isn't it? You know, even when you go like that to the, you know to put your car out. Mm. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's all, it's all, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you don't yeah. even put it in anymore. You know, it, it's sort of wireless up electrical beams somehow. You know? Contactless. Yeah. It's quite amazing. You know, where we are, the world's changing mm. in a, in a very big way. Especially, you know, I, I feel like especially in the last twenty years or so. Yeah. It's, you know, and I'm thinking, goodness me, in another five years, you know, it's, what's going to be like then, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's changing quickly, mm. if you ask me, and it's, I don't know, I, I can't explain it. Mm. But, you know, because I've witnessed my, you know, like, nearly six, six decades now of my life, I've seen the changes. Yeah. Yeah. And my granddad, I can remember him telling me all the time, oh, I never used to be like this. Mm -hmm. You know, and this is when I was younger, he used to tell me, he used to, sort of like, he used to be so much different when I was younger, you know, and I can see it. Yeah. You know, we are changing every decade. Mm. And, you know, I can't imagine what, the, you know, in 10 years' time, yeah. what it's going to be like then. It'd be amazing, mate, to see. Well, and, uh, you know, look, is the electric going to go? Well, they, well, it's funny that you say that because I, 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 was, right, reading a few, I, I was reading a few articles the other day that they reckon that it's a possibility that there could be solar flares that happen within the next few years that could potentially wipe out the internet and other things for a short amount of time, if you see what I mean. Like, you know, they say that there is, I can't remember, so there was some scientific um, thing that was posted, you know, article that was posted, and I was reading through it, and it seemed very, it was quite interesting what they were kind of, you know, talking about, and 
you know, the, the, you know, the, you know, the research behind what they were saying, you know, their theories essentially, um, and they were saying that yeah, there could be severe solar flares that could happen within the next few years that could potentially wipe out the internet for a few months, if you see what I mean. Um, you know, all the basically all the satellites, if you see what I mean, could destroy a lot of satellites that are existing in the you know in the, within the atmosphere right now um, that everyone obviously connects to. Um, if you see what I mean. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting. You know, it's a po I think they're they're kind of saying that it is it could be a possibility. You know, it could be something that we could, you know, could happen in the near future. Because we're already in twenty twenty three, and we're already halfway through. You know, I mean, we're in July now, halfway through Ju halfway through July. So we're already six months in and halfway through July. So we only got another six months, and then it's twenty twenty four. Isn't it? So it's you know. Not that far away, really. Well, the moon could just suddenly drop on us. Mm. Like a mm. ball, mm. like a big ball bump. Mm. Or the earth could drop on the moon. Mm. Other way around. Mm. All kinds of things could happen, really, in the future, really, when you think about it. Mm. Um, yeah. yeah. But it's crime. Let's talk about crime. Is it. Do you think it's getting better or worse, you know? Um, because. I think it fluctuates, you know? You know, when you compare it to 500 years ago, say, yeah. I don't know, you know, I kind of know what it was like to live 500 years ago. Yeah. I can imagine it a bit, you know, they want an electric, that's for sure. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They want any but credit cards back then. It's like crimes today are like, you know, not well, crimes in the, there's a lot more things today that are considered crimes that weren't considered crimes in the past, you know. Um, so, yeah. It's like you said, someone could potentially go to prison today for tax of it, for not paying their taxes. Mm. If you see what I mean. Whether it was intentional or unintentional. You could, you, could go to, you, could, you could go to prison. So it's like, imagine going to prison for six months to a year just for not paying taxes. Like you haven't done anything kind of anything that you kind of deem to be illegal. You haven't you haven't hurt anyone, you haven't robbed anyone, you haven't done wrong by anyone in any way, shape or form. Mm. But you still end up getting in prison. You still end up you know, so it's, it's, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, I don't know whether that's a crime, you see, yeah, if you see what I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, it, I mean, it's like, if you, if, if you own the garden, you know, and you put a few trees on, on it, yeah, and say you were growing apple trees or something, and some little boy climbed over the fence and nicked an apple, would you throw a lot of peace on him? I mean. Well, I think it depends on the person. I think there's some people out there that would, and then there'd be some people out there that would just be like, you know, it is what it is. I mean, is. is it wrong to own something? I mean, so I find when I'm walking about, I see a lot of private signs about keep out of this place, keep out of there, yeah. not allowed there, not allowed. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's sort of like we're being not allowed to fish, not allowed to feed the birds, you know, yeah. and so on. You know, it's. It's, there's too many sort of like signs up, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Saying you're not allowed to do things anymore, yeah. you know what I mean? No very, very restricted. Very strict, sort of like, you're not allowed to do anything anymore. Mm, you're not yeah. even allowed to scratch your nose anymore, <laughs> if you see what I mean. Yeah. Do not pick your nose in public. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or you should, have, you should be getting a £150 fine. You know, sometimes I think like double standards because you see a lot of swearing on TV yeah. and lots of things going on TV. But when you go out there and do it in public, you know, it's sort of like, you know, you're not allowed to do that. You know, no one allowed to swear. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. And things, yeah. You know, and I just think it's, it's double st You know, we're all kind of like, not all of us, but trying to protect the children from the real world. <laughs> Basically, aren't we? Well, I think not all of us. Like, I'm very honest with my kids. But well, obviously, they're still kids, so you have to give it. You have to tell them in a way that's dige that's digestible as a kid. But I'm very honest with my, especially with my son, because obviously my daughter's only she's about to turn five. She's very young. But my son, he's going to be eleven soon. So he's a, you know he's obviously older, and he can understand and comprehend a lot more. Um, I'm very honest with him about it, mate. About how what, you know what the world is like and what to expect as he gets older. I mean, really, children um, to me are young people. Yeah, that's how I look at them. They're young people. Mm. They're no, you know, sometimes you can get a young five-year-old acting like a man. Do you know what I mean? And he's got quite a lot of wisdom on him already. Do you know what I mean? And um, it, it's it's quite strange, really. But I just look at every person 
as a young person, an old person, really. And I think, like you, you know, we've divided it and made rules for young people and rules for old people. Yeah. Like, if you're on the 16, you're not allowed to look at sex pictures or, you know, things like that. Or Are you waiting to come on or, this side? Yeah. I mean, to be honest with you, I, I mean, like, you, you, I mean, I've, I have gone to sites or in my past, whatever, you know, these um, naughty sites, yeah? And it says, are you 18? You know, and they just have to click the button. I think, hang on, if I was 14, I could say yes. You can still click the button. If you still want It doesn't yeah. stop, it doesn't stop anyone, That's does it? That's what I'm saying, you know, yeah. you know I'm saying. You could, be 10 years, you could be 10 years old and click, I am, yes, I am 18 and proceed. Yeah, you know, I've because there's people out there. No, it's honest, but it's yeah. true. What happens is that sometimes there are, unless you've got restrictions on your computer, if a child is using a computer without adult supervision, sometimes if there's no restrictions on the computer, if they're searching something on Google, sometimes things pop up that shouldn't pop up. If you see what I mean, like you wouldn't want a child to see yeah. if you see what I mean. Yeah. And they might click on it inadvertently, not intentionally, and seen something and clicked on it, and then, you know. They're exposed to something that is, you know, not ap appropriate for their age, you know. For their, you know I mean, as, as the birth of the internet, yeah. the internet is, there's a new crime in internet, isn't there? There's I, a lot yeah. of crime in internet. Yeah. In mm. the cyber world. Cyber yeah, you, get, you get cyber crime, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. You know, people um, stealing people's identity. Things. Exactly. And you committing know, committed fraud and stuff. And all too. kinds of things, really. Yeah. You know, sort of like, there's lots of crime really in this newborn internet. You even get people that get arrested and stuff, you get people that commit things like um, revenge porn. Yeah. I think that, that you get a lot, a lot of people that record their experiences today with their, their partners and shit, and then sometimes they break up, have a bad breakup, and sometimes one of them might post it on the internet, mm -hmm. let's say. Because you see that, I've read, I've read about that and heard about it a few times over the years, you know, last few years. Um, and yeah, they end up getting in a, you know, a lot of trouble. You know, like you said, that's a cyber crime. You know, you you know, so. or misled by some scam, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and, and there's so much, you know, sort of like say, since the internet has been born, it's given birth to new criminals. Oh, yeah, yeah. If you see yeah. what I mean, you know, all mm. over the world, mm. you ask me. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah. Crime has now become not only. Um, it's also digital. Yeah. There's digital digital crime now, I guess you would mm. call it, if you see what I mean, because like, obviously it's cyber, so it's all digital, you know, it's, mm. it's all on, online, it's all through the power of the internet. Um, so yeah, and it's also a lot of scammers, you get a lot of scammers today, mate, people that literally get hold of other people's card details, mm. and they use, you've got different programs and shit like that, that they can copy people's cards and use them and transfer money to themselves through that person's bank account, and all sorts of shit. You've got people that would do this to like a hundred different people, a hundred people a day, mm -hmm. if you see what I mean. Just somehow accessing these websites and shit because there are websites and shit out there. And that not, I've never been on any of them personally. I've watched documentaries and shit about it where people have literally, there's websites out there available, what they call the dark web, let's say. Um, and there's websites on, apparently on this dark web, um, dark web, um, like websites and shit, um, where people literally buy people's car details and shit. Oh, yeah. see what I mean, people, you know. Um, so that's what they do. They accumulate all these different people's details, and every single day they'll be skimming money from these people's accounts and shit. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Like um, I think they call it um, like wire, 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 wire tap fraud mm -hmm. or something like that. Um, where they're literally like wiring money from an account to their account or mm -hmm. to like a different account, so, and then they can like somehow get access to the money, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. you know, I think there's all kinds of crime on the internet, you know, um, even with my case, mm. with me, when I was happily married and that, and loved my wife and uh, had a family, yeah. house, a garden, everything, whatever, Yeah. and I was quite enjoying like, working like any other normal man, mm. thought I'd get the internet, mm. and the next minute my, my wife's actually chatting to someone, you know, it's like someone coming into her bedroom, you know, yeah. and jumping in bed with her, you know, and stealing my wife. Yeah. You know, and that's exactly what happened. You know, I lost my wife because of the internet. Yeah. In a funny way, you know. Yeah. It, it enabled other men to talk to her. To get to somehow to be in, yeah be in contact I mean, with her. You know. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and I mean, same with the mobile phone. That you know, it's the mm. same. The, you know, same yeah. reality, whatever. Mm. You know, that's what happened to me. And in reality, I lost. I mean, 
I felt like my my children, my home was stolen from me. Yeah, from you know, by I the hijacked by the internet, way, by the internet in a way. If you sort of mean, mm. I mean, when when afterwards, I don't mind talking about it. You know, sort of like I lost my home and I was homeless for a while. So then I met a billionaire family, as I said, and told them my story, and they gave me their keys to a beautiful boat to live. Do you know what I mean? But she wasn't telling me. She was giving me all my information, yeah, from the children, all my letters. Yeah. But she wasn't telling me about the court. Yeah. Because she knew that I knew yeah. that she was seeing, you know, talking mm. to this other guy, you see. Mm. So she didn't want me in the court case, you know. And, yeah. You know, and I was getting ready to put a court case, but I didn't know when it was. I wasn't getting any letters from, from it. You know, I didn't think, you know, I, I just didn't get notified. And then afterwards, when the absolute was complete, you know, I was devastated to find out my mum phoning me up and said she just got all the paperwork, you know, afterwards, do you know what I mean? Mm. My ex-wife sent it to my mother. And I thought, how horrible is that? Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's quite nasty, really. Yeah. You know, but that's a crime to me, yeah. I feel. I feel like, you know, I, I've not really seen my children since, you know, whatever. And I just feel like someone's robbed my family off me, if you thought of me. Yeah. That's how I feel. Mm. And nobody's been on my side about it, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm. It's sometimes to do with money, isn't it? You know, like my ex-wife was probably out, you know, I was homeless and quite poor at the time and I couldn't get proper solicitors to work for me, if you see what I mean, you know? Mm. And sometimes, like, money can save you from crime. Or, you know, I, I just feel like a lot of cases are unsolved because people can't afford to, to fight them in court, you know what I mean? And so on. I, I, that, that's what happens. A lot of people don't end up getting... Because that's what happens. Sometimes people that can't afford a good lawyer uh, or a good, anyone, a good representative, to like, you know, someone that really knows the law and someone that can help them out, a lot of people have no choice but to go with a public, the public defender. Mm -hmm. Not knowing that a lot of these public defenders are working in cahoots with the prosecutor and the court systems to get you imprisoned, essentially. They'll go, they'll take a plea deal, you know what I mean? They'll take it straight away, they'll try and get you a deal straight away of some kind. They'll take 10 years, you know, they'll give you a reduced deal 10 years instead of X amount of years if you did go to trial, you know? And sometimes they like their work, you know, and it's like not always in your best favour, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so if you, it's good to have, if you, that's why I always say to people like, if you are going to be involved in that kind of lifestyle, make sure you've got some money put away, that if something does happen, you know you can afford a good lawyer, good representative, someone that's going to have your best interest at heart, someone that really knows the law, someone that can come into the court system and really defend you, and that's going to be there to do their best, you're paying them a good rate to do their best to defend you essentially and to try and get you acquitted of whatever you whatever crime it is that they you know they are um trying to um say that you've committed um so yeah if you're going to be a part of that lifestyle make sure that you've got some money put away that you can you know defend yourself if you need to you know because it's you know that's important oh, is this know? is this a crime yeah i th I, I know that you already know mm. but i share a story yeah yeah like so i just told shared the story about my divorce, whatever, you know, and then I got custody of my children, yeah, but I had to go to court for that, that was my second court case, and I've had so many court cases, unbelievable, yeah, you know, I mean, my view of police, I just don't like them anymore, yeah, because of the way I've been treated in the last 20 years or so, yeah, but it's a long story, 